Big bad bosses, magic, spells, and dying. Dying a lot. Elden Ring is a brand new IP and brand new take on what a Souls game could be from From Software. Today we're going to take a look at the six major differences between Elden Ring and the other Souls games. Let's go. Hey, let me know in the comments down below what you're most excited for for Elden Ring. I'm really interested to see what everyone thinks about this game that's coming out very soon. Let's go. Let's start with something completely new to the Souls games, and that is horse riding. Not only is horse riding in Elden Ring, but also horse combat. After you have rested at your third bonfire, you will get access to the Spectral Steed, which is an item that can be summoned. When you're riding the horse, you can shoot arrows and swing your sword on either of the sides of your body and attack the enemies as you pass them. Horse combat is a viable way to fight some of the open world bosses and enemies out while you are exploring. You can do this with like hit and run tactics and in some instances it almost feels like it's encouraged to use these hit and run tactics to take on some of the larger bosses that you may find. There are also enemies that ride their own mounts out in the world to watch out for. Your steed does have its own health and stamina. If they run out of stamina you will get knocked off the steed but you can just resummon it. However if it runs out of health you'll be unable to summon the steed for a period of time. If you do collect the row of fruits while you are out exploring and then craft that into a row of raisin you can use Use that to heal your steeds hell so you can keep them topped up and ready to fight in the open world. And that leads us directly into the open world, which is probably the most obvious one that everyone knows about with Elden Ring is that this is the first true open world from software game. Sekiro played around with some open world spaces, but this is the first true Souls-like game and it's heavily inspired by Breath of the Wild, it seems. As you explore the world, you'll come across secret mini dungeons with their own loot and bosses and different things to find throughout the world, but you can also find some friendlier animals you can kill for materials and there's plants and herbs to collect for all of the crafting. As you do come across camps and these other locations out in the open world, it is worth noting that some of the stealth elements from Sekiro have returned in Elden Ring. So you will actually be able to stealth up to enemies and kill them from behind or avoid them entirely if you do choose to do that while you are out exploring in the open world. Next, we have the Ashes of War. And these are like attunements that you can add to your weapons. Each weapon can have one active Ash of War at a time. These Ash of Wars are like secondary spells or effects that you can use your focus points on to activate some kind of effect. The Ashes of War can heal you, they can damage the enemy, they can also have other effects. These Ashes of War can be found throughout the world in nooks and crannies and in the mini dungeons that you find or just around as you're exploring. You can also find weapons that have unique Ashes of War like this snake shield that I found which has like a snake on the shield which can like attack from the shield itself. Not only will they give you some kind of cool effect but they also have attribute scaling. So if you put a Ash of War that has a strength based scaling for example on a weapon that isn't really strength focused you can actually increase its strength based scaling so if you have it running a strength based build you can increase the scaling therefore doing more damage with that weapon just by having that Ash of War equipped. Next we have the focus on magic and typically with Souls games magic are like a secondary ability and they're pretty limited in their overall scope you can't do too much with magic in the previous Souls games unlike Demon Souls I guess but this is a viable way to play in Elden Ring from what we have seen, playing a solely magic focused build. Magic and magical abilities are much more of a focus with using the focus points that we now have in order to use some of these abilities. We also have these spirit summons, which are different creatures that you can summon to aid you in combat. These are things from the three wolves or a ranged priest or a strong knight or any other ones that we haven't seen yet. The summoning spirits will usually consume some of your focus points. You can only summon one spirit at a time and you can only summon it once during an encounter or boss and you'll be unable to summon them while in multiplayer. There is also sorcery spells and incantations. Incantations act similarly to miracles from Dark Souls and spells are your typical spells that you would expect with their own variants for the Elden Ring genre that we have here. But ultimately, regardless of the build you are playing, there will be some element of magic that you'll be playing around with unless you're playing in multiplayer, maybe then you will rely on someone else. But if you are playing Elden Ring as a full-blown knight with no magic, you're still going to to use some of the spirit summons in order to aid you in combat especially in some of the harder boss fights so that you can take some of that attention away from you so then you can attack that boss and even if you aren't using it for that regard if you're just playing any of the other builds that come with these incantations or spells you're going to be using 
them and the spirit summon. So regardless of a build that you do pick in the game, you will be using some form of your focus points to whether it's to summon spirit summons or spells or incantations, everyone will be using some form of this system in Elden Ring, I believe. And next we have crafting, and this is an extension of the open world point. And there are harvestable plants like flowers and bushes, as well as wild animals that you can hunt in order to obtain meat and bones like sheep and eagles and deer. These materials can then be used in the new crafting system. Before you can craft, you have to obtain the crafting kit, which can be purchased from the merchant Kale for 50 ruins. The crafting kit will give you access to some basic crafting recipes that you can then use. However, when you are out exploring, you should keep an eye out for cookbooks, which will increase your recipes that you can then use to gain that additional advantage. These can be found from vendors or just found throughout the world by exploring. Crafting will be a necessary part in Elden Ring to gain advantage in fights. And in previous Souls games, you know, the weapon codes, the fire pots, the throwing weapons, and the likes, these would be bought from NPCs with souls. However, in Elden Ring, you're actually going to craft these items yourself, which means you can spend those souls or runes in Elden Ring on more important things. In the network test is any indication there will be plenty of recipes to find at different items to craft as you explore the open world. So definitely keep an eye out for that. There's also different arrow types that you can craft if you are going to be an archer kind of build. There's a lot of flexibility in the different recipes. So it's well worth a system that everyone should be looking into. Our last major point is freedom of choice. And this is the most interesting part of Elden Ring. And I think it's what really going to take Elden Ring to another level in terms of accessibility. And it's really that freedom of choice. And typically Souls games have a pretty linear path. You know, you must follow this one more or less same direction. If you get stuck on a boss or in an area, you really can't do anything other than just backtrack to where you were previously were, maybe grind out some extra levels to then try and take that boss on again. In Elden Ring, you can get stuck on the first real boss, which I can't of did in the closed network test you have an entire open world to explore you can level up you can craft and just generally get stronger and then return and take him on later i think for casual souls players or even people brand new to the souls genre this is what's going to make elden ring much more accessible and easier to get into than some of the other souls games without this kind of loop of getting stuck on specific bosses and not having anything else to do it's also worth noting that actually going out in the open world and fighting these hidden catacombs and smaller dungeons dungeons is a great way to level up and not only level up but as you do kill enemies or groups of enemies and stronger enemies out in the open world it will refill your flask so you can heal and keep exploring you don't have to return to a bonfire and reset all of the enemies kind of like you had to do in all of the other souls games but ultimately this freedom that comes from the open world and having these additional ways that you can really interact with the game and also the crafting system being able to create the items you need rather than spending runes on them and spending those runes to actually level up and increase your actual character power strength there's going to be a lot of freedom that you will have in this game and finding gear and everything just to be even before you take on the first boss you could do that last you know you could explore most of the open world and then go and do that i think that's going to be something that's a real strength for elden ring let me know in the comments down below what you're most excited for for elden ring really interested to see what everyone is really interested about for this game thank you for watching this video to the end thank you to our members for supporting the channel my name is norza and i hope you have a great day